What if I told you that Oda has been hinting at a connection between Dragon and Shanks for the last two and a half decades? And what if I told you that Monkey D. Dragon and Ben Beckman are two of the smartest and most knowledgeable characters in the entire series, conspiring as an alliance? And lastly, what if I told you that it was actually Ben Beckman's grand plan all along for Luffy to eat the Gummo Gummo no Mi? So enjoy the show because One Piece has been hinting at this since the first chapter. Ben Beckman. One of the most iconic moments in One Piece is the red haired pirates entering Marine Ford. Shanks clashed with Akainu and threatened to fight anyone who would continue. And Shanks even saved Kobe's life. Meanwhile, the one who prevented Luffy's death and saved his life was actually the vice captain, Ben Beckman himself. Now, I will be discussing multiple different ideas and seeing if I can connect them all together, so just stick with me here. First of all, let's start off with the facts. What do we know about Ben Beckman? Well, to start off, he is a character who was introduced in the very first chapter of One Piece. Chapter 1 along Luffy, Roger, Makino, Shanks. Ben Beckman has been around since day one. Shanks is the sun. Ben Beckman is the moon. Oda described them like this for a reason, and I would say if you're going to parallel them this hard as a yin and yang duo, their relationship is so close together that, you know, it makes sense why Shanks made him the vice captain. And while Shanks has the energy and raw talent of a Campton and a Yonko, he loves to party and you know he loves the adventure of the pirate journey. And meanwhile, Ben Beckman is smarter, he's serious, he's realistic, less jokes and more business. And since he is the vice captain, an equal level of respect goes towards him. If everyone loves and respects Shanks in the One Piece community and also the One Piece world in the story, we also have to put a similar amount of respect towards Ben Beckman. Just because we don't see as much of him, it doesn't mean that he's not going to be as important or as powerful as Shanks. For example, Shanks is seen laughing, having the time of his life, making fun of Luffy for being young, and Ben Beckman is more reserved and seems to be the one who can keep Shanks in check and on the path towards greatness, similar to how Zoro was during Water 7 to Luffy. Not only is he the first mate to Shanks, and whether it be raw strength or more likely intelligence, knowledge, and strategy, Ben Beckman is just important to the overall crew and dynamic of the Red Hair Pirates. One fact about Ben Beckman is that he is one of the smartest characters in One Piece. Order said that he is the most intelligent character from the East Blue Saga. And right there, there are already only a few characters that will come close. Those are probably Shanks and Dragon. There might be a few more, let me know. But, you know, Shanks, I don't think he's that smart, honestly. He doesn't seem like the brightest character and he could be a lot more like Luffy in personality and nature or like Roger. And the real brightest character that he would most likely be saying that he's smarter than was Dragon. I mean Dragon technically showed up at the end of the East Blue Saga during Law Town. And to be smarter than the most wanted man in the world and leader of the revolutionary army is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't think Oda would just say this for any simple reason. In my opinion, I think he knows that many of the fans will first think about Dragon and lead to that comparison. Ben Beckman clearly isn't some average Joe and he must have some kind of insane lineage to be gone this far into the new world to be this strong as a vice captain on the same level or at least a similar level to Shanks. And this is where I started thinking about Dragon and Ben Beckman and the connection, but hold on, we'll get into that. And just from this Oda comment of who is the smartest character in the East Blue, this is where I started to compare Dragon and Ben Beckman, and I discovered there are a lot more connections between the two characters than I expected. Hizaru fought against Riley, but he was not willing to fight against Ben Beckman. Now, it wasn't just Ben Beckman, he had the whole crew and Shanks there as well. But that is just completely insane, because Riley is basically retired, but still... He was so strong going toe to toe with Hizu and honestly you know he was able to kill Luffy and he was about to until Beckman pulled up. It wasn't Shanks, it wasn't anyone else that saved him. Keep this in mind because this confrontation will definitely be important as we learn about Ben Beckman in his past and I believe there is a true connection to the revolutionary so when comparing him to Dragon I quickly compared the designs and first off I noticed something. One distinct feature that they have in common is they don't have any eyebrows, they both had long black hair and you know so that's just a design standpoint, but they do look kind of similar, maybe not that close together, but I could see them being somehow related. I don't I don't think they are though. A character who also has a similar kind of design would be Crocodile, and if these three are brothers, I mean that wouldn't be surprising to me, but I just don't think it's true. And now moving on, I want to say that we also know that he has some kind of connection to the revolutionaries, and I'm talking about Croc here. Croc definitely does, so if they were brothers, that could make sense, but 
more likely they're probably not. But as I searched more and more about clues about Ben Beckman, I realized, even if they're not brothers, Dragon and Ben Beckman are still connected and are still allies in the One Piece world. They probably do have some past in history, and I would definitely be showing you why. Just hear me out. When we first seen Shanks and his crew, they were stopping by the Gold Kingdom where Luffy lives. That's also where Garp and Dragon are most likely from. And how would Shanks know about this land? Well, there are multiple possibilities. First of all, if Garp is connected to the revolutionaries through Dragon, then they could have been communicating this way with Shanks and Ben Beckman. And if Ben Beckman and Dragon have a past, they could also be doing this. And also, Shanks in Chapter 1 says that he's been visiting the area for one year, so we can assume that's how long he's known Luffy. Now, this next bit of information is extremely important, so Luffy asks Shanks how long he will continue to use this area as a base to stock up, and Shanks says after two or three more voyages, they will leave and they will not come back. Now, where does Shanks say they're going to head next? Shanks says, we will leave for good and head north. So, okay, north. Now, what does that mean? Honestly, I don't think I ever realized this until I just read it now that he said north. And looking back on it, many people might assume that this means the new world and it was finally time for Shanks and the crew to finally journey into the new world. And while this is definitely possible, I don't think that's what Oda was referencing. He specifically says the north for a reason, and what that means to me is the north blue and that sea, that area. Now, one critical piece of information here is that Ben Beckman is actually from the North Blue. And in my opinion, this is where they headed. Now, remember all this because it's gonna shift again to Monkey D. Dragon. So Monkey D. Dragon, he's the leader of the revolutionaries, Shanks and his crew were using the Goa Kingdom as a base for about a year. Shanks says, right before he leaves for good, we've been using this harbor as a base of operations for a long time. Maybe too long. Hmm, so maybe too long? Now, to me that sounds, you know, obviously you're gonna think they're pirates and they gotta get out of there because if they stay there too long, people are gonna capture them, they're gonna go after them and they're gonna know that they're there. So obviously about precautionary and just don't stay in the same area for too long, you gotta keep moving. But that is a literal meaning that they have been hanging around there too often and with Luffy there, they don't wanna be seen. But I truly believe there is actually a hidden meaning and you see, after the Shanks pirates leave, what happens? Garb comes and takes Luffy and Ace to meet and live together. But more importantly, after this we see in a flashback that Monkey D. Dragon was visiting Goa. Shortly after Shanks left, it could have been Dragon's new base. And he goes and saves Sabo. I don't think it was a one time thing. He could have been coming back and forth after Shanks left. The thing is, if Shanks, Dragon, and Ben Beckman all have some kind of connection, some grand plan, one reason why Shanks could be saying all this, maybe too long, it could be because if they're seen together, it could raise suspicion. If there's any idea of an alliance between the revolutionaries, Luffy, Garb, and Red Hair Pirates, you know, it's done, it's over. These dudes have to keep it as low key as possible while still checking up on Luffy, you know, still going to the Gold Kingdom for certain reasons. And it's a very good place for a base because not that many people know about it. And now the proof is also in the fact that Shanks says they were headed north, and like I said, Ben Beckman was from the North Blue, and another character who was from the North Blue was Drake. And why is this important? Well, Drake was from there and his father was a pirate and a marine. And Drake is the same way. He was a marine and a pirate. And, you know, he is an undercover member with Tysa Kobe, possibly also the Garp. Now, if you haven't checked out Randy Choi's video where he talks about Law being an undercover double agent, well, that video explains a lot of the information about Law, who is also from the North Blue and Drake as well. in Law's hometown which could possibly be Ben Beckman's as well but since Law is a smart character just like Ben Beckman maybe not as smart but he is definitely a high IQ character and he comes from a smart family of doctors. Oda says that Ben Beckman is the most intelligent character in the East Blue and this cannot be a coincidence especially since it's in the first chapter of One Piece where we see them talking about the North and they see them talking about you know they're gonna get out of there as quickly as possible. And with us not knowing much about Ben Beckman and Shanks, we have to use what little information Oda gives us about them since the beginning and see what the clues they were talking about. And looking back on it, why was Dragon and Goa Kingdom when he saves Sabo? Very similarly to how Garb shows up randomly when he goes to see Ace and Luffy. And same thing with Shanks, except they all do it at different times. You never see them crossing. You never see their paths cross. 
it's just very interesting to me that after Shanks left, then Dragon came to Gold Kingdom. And after Shanks said he was going north, eventually we know that the Dragon and the Revolutionary Army was north in their base. And you know, Shanks talks about it specifically. This is our base of operations. So they're using the same kind of terminology as well. Now one idea I had is, you know, is Dragon possibly looking for Shanks? Maybe in the beginning he was looking for Shanks and then he finally found him. Then they teamed up, went to the North Blue. I think the more likely scenario here is that they're using the same base, they're all communicating and they're, you know, Ben Beckman's idea is to go and find the North because he knows about it. Who else would know about that deserted island? And so then he tells Dragon and then Dragon goes there too. So that could be an alliance right there. Now another reason why I believe Ben Beckman to be connected to Dragon is because of the little interactions we see of him. And while Shanks loves to party and joke around with Luffy, Ben Beckman is in a much different relationship with Luffy. You know, you could chalk him up to being, you know, it's, his personality could be much more serious and he talks to him in a specific manner, but he also tells Luffy the real shit he needs to hear. While, you know, Shanks doesn't really care and he doesn't want Luffy to die or risk his life out there for their crew because, you know, Luffy could be a risk out there. But being a pirate, it can be an exciting adventure. At the same time, it's not all fun and games all the time. And Shanks and Ben Beckman are two sides of the same coin. Yin and Yang, the sun and the moon, and Oda describing them as sun and the moon is perfect because it shows that these two characters have reflected on Luffy's personal life. And Shanks is the fun, outgoing partier, while, you know, Luffy can also be the jokester pirate captain, and he has those vibes, but Ben Beckman taught him life lessons. He taught him about being more mature, being a hard ass dude, not being soft at all, and looking out for him as well. It was always obvious that these two cared about Luffy much more than anyone else in the beginning of the first chapter, and more than the others in the crew especially since Luffy doesn't really talk to them, but he does talk a lot to Ben and Shanks. And at the end of the chapter, they both agree that Luffy will be an amazing legendary pirate one day. While Luffy has a clear parallel to Shanks, especially with the Straw Hat, it's clear to me that Ben Beckman has been tremendously overlooked as a role model to Luffy as well. Now, why does Ben Beckman care so much about Luffy? You know, if my theory is correct about Ben Beckman having a relationship with Dragon, then that is a good enough reason. He could be looking after Dragon's son Luffy, you know, cares about him on a much different level since Dragon can't be there as the most wanted man in the world. Now this next part is definitely going to blow your mind, hear me out here. So we know that Shanks and his crew broke into a prison where who's who had the Gummo Gummo Nomi and one of the most important devil fruits in the world. Now the reason why they were able to succeed was for two reasons, Shanks and Ben Beckman. Now I truly believe that Goldie Roger previously had the Gummo Gummo Nomi and possibly even rocks. And I know I can definitely prove that Roger had it, but that will be for a different video. Anyways, if Roger did have it, let's just assume he did for this, it could possibly be a reason why Shanks wanted it so bad and knew how important it was. Now with that in mind, if Dragon was, you know, a past marine with ties to Garb or even just a long history with Dragon, it allows Ben Beckman to come up with a crazy plan that could work as a heist-like mission. You know, Ben Beckman could have also been a past marine if he's Dragon's relative or even if he's not because if he was working as a marine under Garp and he was training alongside of Dragon, well this could also tie in. And the reason why is because the reality is that these all do have a connection together with Dragon, Garp, and Ben Beckman all returning to Goa Kingdom but in different times. Now how did they know they were going in different times? How did they not cross paths? Well they were definitely communicating in some way. So with the knowledge from Dragon, that could be enough to break into the prison and successfully take it making a strategic plan with the layouts of the prison. Shanks and Ben Beckman combining their goals was how they got the job done. And since Ben Beckman was the true mastermind, it makes sense why this next piece of information just straight up gave me goosebumps because we know he's smart. But have you ever heard of the theory that Shanks always planned Luffy to have the Gummo Gummo know me all along? All a part of his master plan. Well, it's possible, but I have proof. I have actual proof that this was actually Ben Beckman's plan all along. In the first chapter, when it's revealed that Luffy ate the Gummo Gummo no Mi, we see in Shanks and the Shanks pirate reactions. And first we see Shanks, he's shocked and even sweaty. And I feel like this was Oda implying that Shanks truly wanted the fruit for himself. And he starts freaking out and all the other shipmates do as well, except for one person, Ben Beckman. In fact, Ben Beckman is nowhere to be seen during this, so we don't even get to see his reaction. 
which is the most suspicious thing I've ever heard of because he either disappears or Oda purposely didn't show him in his reaction because it would give it away. If he was calm, collected, and maybe even smirking while Shanks and the rest of the crew are losing their mind, well, that's a little suspicious right there. And they busted a crazy ass mission for this fruit, and now young Luffy has the power. All along, where was Ben Bagman during this review? And he was there a few pages before and then just isn't shown, so it just doesn't make sense. He's the vice captain, like, why would Ben Beckman not be here? And now do you see why it was his master plan? Because Ben Beckman is a genius. He's even smarter than Dragon. He's one of the smartest characters in the One Piece world. How do you think Shanks is able to do all this? How do you think he's able to move like this? Shanks might not even be very smart, but you know, who knows, right? Shanks could, you don't, you don't really know what Shanks because you don't see so much, but we know Ben Beckman is smart, and Shanks is probably a lot more like Luffy, but Oda telling us Ben is so smart must be used in this context where he's involved. And the reality is that Ben Beckman manipulated the situation with the goal all along of being able to give Luffy the Gummo Gummo Nomi. And you know, like I'm saying, if Dragon and Ben Beckman have some kind of relationship, Okay, so this is another part of it. Dragon could be like, okay, you can go and get it, but you're gonna give it to Luffy. If Dragon knows all these different things from Garb about the prisons, he knows all these different details, he was also a marine most likely. Okay, so then this is a way where they can both win, and they can team up and find their end goals. Next up, we have Log Town, and this is the first place we've seen Dragon, and the next time we see is Shanks. We have Dragon, right? There's a very suspicious interaction in Log Town. Dragon's first appearance, and it's just like Dragon appearing in Gold Kingdom after Shanks was left. It's not a coincidence, because it's also not a coincidence that the next time we've seen Shanks, besides Buggy flashback, was in Log Town as well. The same part of the story that Dragon was introduced was the next time we've seen Shanks. Now keep in mind that Mihawk was most likely nearby Log Town as well, since we saw him partying with Shanks, and he reveals Luffy's bounty to him. So, not only that, Zoro is obsessed with swords and he sees a lot of swords, so maybe Mihawk was interested in that, I don't know. But the reality is, Baratie, it's not that far away from Longtown because Arlon Park is the only one in between, and then they end up in Longtown right after that. So, Shanks is also somewhere nearby Longtown. And who else is in Longtown? Luffy. Who else is in Longtown? Dragon. And most importantly, this is Goldie Rogers' hometown and where he died. But the most interesting interaction is between Dragon and Smoker because in the anime, it's the gust and the wind that we see pushing Nami and Sanji. They go flying and keep in mind that this is where Roger came from, like I said, and Smoker says, he vanished like a flash of lightning in an instant the day that Roger died as well. That's also Shanks' captain, the king of the pirates, but also Dragon might have known Roger as well. Think about it, since he was most likely training with Garp and fought Roger multiple times, this could also be how Shanks and Dragon knew each other, similar to how Shanks and Buggy were facing off against Blackbeard and Marco and Odin flashback. Now what if Garb's crew members were Ben Beckman and Dragon? This could be how they are brothers, you know, maybe not blood related like Ace and Sabo and Luffy are not blood. And this could also explain how Ben Beckman is from the North Blue, and why he has a different last name. If he was part of the Marines and trained with Garb, it could also explain how he's so powerful and why he knows so much information about all these different places in the world, why he's just so aware of everything, he has the high IQ. You know, being a part of a secret organization is not easy. Going undercover is not easy. You have to be smart to do this, at least at some level. And if Ben Beckman was fighting against Shanks, maybe they could be rivals. Maybe Dragon and Shanks were rivals back in the day, you just never know. Oda also once said that Ben Beckman is the only person who understands Shanks. And this could be why, because if they were rivals and both doing crazy ass shit, they all know a lot of wild stuff from Roger and Garp who shared information. Now, they can go back to the Smoker and Dragon event in Longtown and implying the fact that Smoker and Dragon have some kind of respect or history since they didn't want to fight, they didn't have any tensions. In a calm, quick convo, Smoker says, the government wants your head. He isn't hostile, but he's actually pretty calm, which hints that Smoker could be somewhat involved with Garp and Dragon or someone else or maybe he's just cool with Dragon in some way and he's the most wanted man and anyone else would be trying to capture him immediately. Dragon replies by saying the world is waiting for our answer and in my mind it can mean three things here. Simply they're waiting for our answer as in the revolutionaries 
or in this specific conversation with Smoker saying the government wants your head. So maybe Dragon saying our, you know, our answer as in Smoker and Dragon, maybe even Luffy as well because he was there. But I think it would be more intriguing if all along he meant our as in Shanks and Dragon. The Red Hair Pirates and the Revolutionaries. Now, what if the secret base that the Red Hair Pirates and the Revolutionaries were using was either Logtown or somewhere right nearby Logtown? If this is Roger's hometown, maybe he knows some secret facility within it, some secret hidden place in Logtown where they could hide and no one will find them. And now, the reason why I believe the final option of Shanks and Dragon to be the one that is going to give the answer is because of the most important event in One Piece, the Reverie. Now during Reverie, it is known as one of Shanks most important moments in the entire series. But it's interesting to me that Shanks also shows up to Reverie the same day that Sabo showed up. He speaks to the Gorosei the same day that Sabo wants to declare war and Dragon wants to declare war on the Celestial Dragons. Is this a coincidence? I don't think so. I don't think it is. I just don't see how it is. And again, we have Shanks and Dragon both in the same arc and Ben Beckman of all people was missing. Reverie was so many questions and it had so many different mysteries. But if Shanks and Dragon have been teaming up all along and they're about to declare war against the world government, this could be the answer that they were waiting for. Maybe Ben Beckman was with Dragon and Shanks went with Sabo and they split up into two different factions. This would leave up the two strategists together the two smartest characters of their both of their different alliances and then you have Sabo and, and uh, Shanks so maybe Sabo and Shanks are just you know they're the meatheads they're just they just want to fight and they want to actually do and they're actually down for the cause and the leaders and icons of the inspiration of their cause because Shanks is a symbol no matter what Shanks is the face of the Red Hair Pirates and Sabo actually is as well now Dragon might be to us but in the world of One Piece Sabo really is Sabo is the hope for the future of the revolutionaries. Like I said before, maybe Ben Beckman was, when he said we want to go north, they were there too. So like this could really be the connection that we've been looking for. Most likely, something Ben Beckman could have advised is to drag him because he would be the one to know a perfect area where no one could find them, a remote island. And now with Blackbeard, we know he's been searching for the hideout for the revolutionaries. But the real question here is why, because we never really seen or heard anything about Blackbeard caring for a dragon, but once Dressrosa comes, Sabo fights Bergs for Ace's fruit, but this is also adding fuel to the fire that was already on top, because Bergs told Blackbeard that he finally found their secret base. Now, was he implying that they've been looking for all along, even before Sabo, and he met at Dressrosa? I, I don't really know. But still, why? I, I just don't get it. Bergs mentioned Sabo, who we know has a personal grudge against, but also Dragon. And it kind of did feel like they were looking for Dragon in the base all along. Now, the only thing I could think of that brings this all together is the fact that Shanks and Blackbeard are enemies, do have a sour past. You know, they have a lot of history together. If Blackbeard somehow figured out that Shanks was teaming up with the revolutionaries, then this could be a real reason why they're looking for their base. Because at this point, the revolutionary army is so powerful, so large, that you don't want to just go in and start a war. You don't want to just do that. That's not a very smart option. But if they are looking for Shanks, and Blackbeard and Shanks do have beef, then that could be a personal reason why. One, Luffy, Law, and Drake are taking care of Kaido. 
And I think they have trust in that. Now, meanwhile, the reverie is currently happening. And because the hideout is revealed, it now means it's now or never, since their army is so massive now that they can't keep hiding out for long. Shang says he wants to talk about a specific pirate, and I think it's Blackbeard, because you know, Blackbeard has been very suspicious the entire time. There's a rumored team up with Aokiji, and also the fact that we can assume the revolutionaries and the Blackbeard pirates aren't fighting since we've seen Blackbeard and his crew on his island with Mariah, and Dragon has found a quick temporary base with Ivankov. And now this is really what really makes me think that Shanks and Dragon teamed up, because Dragon then announces to Koala to round up all the leaders of the revolutionary army so that they can finally declare war against the Celestial Dragons. And guess who shows up that day? It's Sabo and the others. And guess who else? Shanks. Shanks, now this could be a hint of a team up because if Shanks is in alliance with Dragon, it would all make sense to why Shanks isn't with his crew but instead have pulled up with Sabo when Dragon says bring all the leaders of the revolutionary army. Now you think it's just the guys that are with Sabo, but you know, what if there's a lot of other allies? What if Shanks is one of them because he was there the same day at the same time? The information they possess. I truly think that Shanks learned from Roger and whatever it is added from Ben Beckman as well, a very knowledgeable character, I truly believe this is the reason why the Gorosei are willing to speak and negotiate with him at all costs. He's much too dangerous now, much too powerful now. I really hope that Shanks is using the knowledge from Rox, Roger, and Ben Beckman as blackmail or a bargaining chip to get what he wants. Now this could be why Luffy has not been seeked after. This could be why when they knew his name and they seen his bounty and they seen he has a gummo gummo no me, you know, they seen Monkey D Luffy. This is the reason why they never went after him this entire time, especially in the East Blue. Because you could have got rid of Luffy from the beginning. But if Shanks is the one bargaining with them for a certain reason not to expose certain things, this could be a reason why. So maybe they're actually talking about Luffy. Now, I don't know. I really do think they're talking about Blackbeard, but it could be both. So let me summarize here. First within Logtown is Dragon's first appearance and Shanks is seen right after. And next, in the post in this lobby arc, or just a mini arc, we've seen Luffy, right? And he talks to Garth for the first time. And we also find out that Dragon was his dad for the first time. And that he's a revolutionary and the most wanted man in the world. All of that together at once, that's the second time we really see Dragon, and after that Whitebeard and Shanks clash in the same mini arc. Then Reverie happens, the revolutionary army appears to declare war on the government, and we finally see Shanks again, alone though this time, having a mysterious confrontation with the Gorusei. So if you look back on it, they both have that connection of the Gold Kingdom, and since Ace and Luffy's backstory was so far in the future, it's easy to forget about it chronologically, but Dragon was in Goa not so long after Garp and not so long after Shanks used it as a base. Once Shanks said he's heading north, Dragon eventually heads north as well, I am so sure that the Red Hair Pirates and the Revolutionaries at the very least have been working together. Now there is one final bit of information I would like to share about Ben Beckman and Ace this time. When it comes to Fire Fist Ace, there's info about it that came out of the novels and this was the final icing on the cake for me. In the Ace novels, Ben Beckman is evaluating Ace with Shanks. Shanks asked him to do it because he trusts the smarter man, Ben Beckman clearly knows and knows how to evaluate a pirate. Ace essentially turned down the role of a warlord. But Ben Beckman says he's a strong fighter, however, he's not fit to be a pirate commanding multiple ships. He would be better off, hear me out, he would be better off as a revolutionary. Now this is where I was just like, what is going on here? Because characters don't usually speak up or mention the revolutionaries at all in the story. But here we have Ben Beckman making this assessment that A should be a revolutionary instead of a pirate. And not only because of strength in his fiery nature, but I do believe that Ben Beckman wanted to push Ace in the direction and maybe even recruit him. You know, maybe even have the revolutionaries recruiting Ace. And I don't find this to be a coincidence because it's such a small chunk of information, such a small dialogue randomly thrown into an Ace novel. And it's a Shanks and Ben Beckman cameo in the middle of an Ace story, which, you know, that is the only thing that Ben Beckman says. So what happens after this is even more insane because Shanks looks at the newspaper remembers aces from Bateria of the South Blue, and Shanks starts smiling. Now why does he start smiling? Well, I've seen people speculate that Shanks is also from that island, but what I think is just that it reminded him of Roger, you know, his final days, and Ace is also Roger's son as well, so it makes sense why he's thinking about Roger. He's just smiling remembering his captain, most likely. But then, Shanks recalls that Ace had always known Roger's true name. 
And by this he means the name of D. So he all along knew it was Goldie Roger instead of Gold Roger. Now what happens after this is so freaking amazing, bro. It's so hype because Shang starts smiling even bigger, right? Even more insane. He's got that crazy ass Luffy smile basically on. And while all of this is being said about the Will of D, Ben Beckman says, Yo, I, I shit you not. I shit you not. Ben Beckman says, Shanks' smile looks a bit different from what he usually sees from Shanks. So what does this mean? Now, I do think that could be confirming that Shanks has that crazy Luffy smile, maybe even hinting at Joy Boy or the Will of D. Now, that is a completely another video in itself if Shanks has the Will of D, but this really is a clear-cut hint that Shanks does. I don't see it in any other way. Because, you know, Ben Beckman is just a smart dude. He just picks up on this type of stuff. So, you know, Ben Beckman bringing up the revolutionaries in this small little amount of dialogue. It's, that's not a coincidence to me. All of this dialogue right here with Shanks and Ben Beckman in the small scene, all of it is important. This is the most, you know, line by line, most consistently banger lines going back to back to back, intriguing as hell. And as you can see, Ben Beckman is one of the most interesting characters on One Piece. Now, I don't know... You know, it's hard to find a lot of information on him, so I understand why people are not making videos on him. But come on, man, I really love Ben Beckman. I want to see more of this guy, and I truly believe that Dragon and Ben Beckman have some kind of connection and an alliance with the Red Hair Pirates and the Revolutionaries. I truly believe it was all part of Ben Beckman's planning, manipulating, and strategy to get the Gummo Gummo Nomi and eventually help Luffy to eat it instead of Shanks. And last but not least, I am positive that Ben Beckman will live up to the hype. Kizaru was not trolling. He was joking around and serious at the same time. But, I, you know, Ben Beckman, when he says it, Ben Beckman, and he saves Luffy's life. Ben Beckman was the one who saved Luffy's life. Think about that. If he knows Dragon, that's an even more personal reason why he's going to save Luffy. What if Shanks actually knows Kobe as well? That's why he's rushing in there as fast as he can to just save Kobe. You know, he would not do that for some random dude. I don't think Shanks would. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Now, let me know, do you think there's a three-way alliance between Sword, the Revolutionaries, and also the Red Air Pirates? Or do you just think maybe there's actually just coincidences? And in my opinion, you know, Ben Beckman will always live on in the memories of One Piece fans as just having the most hype moment of all time. And I'm just as shocked that no one makes any real theories about him and Shanks as a duo. As Ben Beckman in his past, you can look for these little details. And I just cannot wait to see what is going to happen at the end of Wano. The final war is finally going to be here. And I can't wait to see it be Sabo, Ben Beckman, Dragon, and Shanks. So anyways guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you've learned a lot of interesting information about Ben Beckman, Shanks, and all the others. Dragon as well. If you want to see any more One Piece videos like this where I break down a lot of information, you know, just analyze what is going on in the story, look back at the early chapters. I have a few videos planned and one of them is a Sabo video. So that's definitely coming next. You know, don't forget to like button, don't forget to subscribe, and remember to have a great day.